Hey guys, JH, welcome to Practice 2. Windy old Practice 2 again today, and I'm right over here, right in the corner with the cows. Whew, the ground, the ground, ground here, look, this is a six inch deep rough here. Okay guys, a couple of points that I want to make, which because we're getting into the, the intrinsic um, points of, of channel lock. Okay. Okay, well, something that's re really important. <coughs> In setting up to channel lock, like with any good athletic um, process for any 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 sport where you're going to involve dynamic mo movement and speed and, and power and pressure, you've got to be balanced and you've got to be balanced um, effectively and efficiently. Now, what I see sometimes when people when they start learning channel lock is that they they get all their, their body components, all their mass, all stacked, you know, out of out of whack, so to speak. So, to give you a feeling and an understanding of how you should set up with channel lock at address, you can do it this way, guys. You can do it without the golf club. I want you to come in here and just set yourself down in here like this. Just get the weight hunkering down into your thighs, into your, into your buttocks here. And don't tilt that, that upper body in any direction. Just let it feel like it's stacked on top of, of, your, of, your, of your, your hip girdle line. And, and, and that's on top of your thighs line. And they're on top of your hip line, uh, your knee line. Yeah, so just come in here, guys. Just get in here without the golf club. Just get in here and feel your hands are just here like this. And hunker in here like that and set in there like that. Get down there. See, I haven't got... I haven't got my body tilted out here. Well, I'm not like that. Now, now when I'm in here like that, and I, and I haven't done any measurement here, but watch this. As soon as I pick that golf club up, it's in the right position. Because you instinctively do that. Now, we don't want to have a, the reverse of that, where we come in here and we put the golf club down, and then we're trying to position our body to suit the golf club. That's wrong. We need, we need the golf club to be subservient and and um, uh, a victim of the requirements of the body set. And the body set, I'm forgetting the golf club here. I'm just getting in here and I'm just setting in here, feeling nice and comfortable here. A little bit of precock into those knees there. All right? I just happen to have the club in my hand. Okay, now I'll put the club in position. Now look at that guy. That's perfect. I can do that like this. Just come in, not worried about the golf club. Just come in here, set, set that ball on the back foot there. Get in here, hunker down, here. You'll feel it. And this is not out here. It's not back here, it's not over here. It's not there, it's just here. And, and guys, I'm here, now watch, when I put the club here. How perfect is that? That's, all, that's what it's about, guys. That's what it's about. It's, get, it's getting this, this whole formation of all those body mass components stacked vertically correctly. Now the reason we don't want the, the, the upper mass here hanging out in space like that is because in the turn you will then, what I, what I call, you, you'll just roll fall in, in, in the turn in the back. If it's out here, you'll roll and fall into the backswing here, like that. Now from there guys, there's no way back. The only way back there is a re-establishment of that roll fall um, reasoning, the reason you went in that direction there where you took all the mass there, you've got to re-establish that mass back to its vertical alignment and you have to go from there to there. Now you can't do that. All we want to do is keep that all that body mass alignment in place here and then all we want to do is just turn that, turn that around a fixed axis which is this trail side. We just want to turn it here like that. That's all we want to do. We just want to turn it just like a door opening on a hinge or a gate opening on a hinge. We don't want to move the gate post. The gate post is this. We don't want the gate post to go backwards, we don't want it to go forwards or sideways. We want it to be set uh, with, with its, um, its foundation uh, into that trail side. That's where it needs to be, here. So set up guys, forget the golf club. Just come in. Come in, set yourself down. Feel you're in that position there, here. 
there and hunker down, get those knees in there, play the cymbals on the knees. You can't have too much of that formation, guys, I promise you, it'll help you. Here. And then just go, and they just put the club down, there it is. <laughs> the club's a servant. You're not a servant of the club. The club has to do what the body formation tells it to do and requires it to do. Here. So that's, that's, that's just a little thing. Now the other thing is that once we've established that, all that balancing in there and we're in that position here and we take the club to the top of the swing, watch what this knee here, because I'm down in this, this hunkered down soggy knees formation now, watch what that lead knee does when I get in here. Now that guy's has really talked up that lead knee. It's, it, it feels like there's a big elastic band pulling it that way. Now in the downswing, all I want to do is reverse uh, that, that, that pull that way with elastic band going that way. Now watch what happens here. If, if I just do my, my setup correctly and I, and I, and I, and I do my, my coil, my pivot coil correctly, watch that lead knee here, here. Now watch what happens with, my cl with the club just at the top here. Watch what happens if I do nothing else but just turn that lead knee towards the, towards the big toe. Watch what happens. It, it sort of turns radially and then, then towards the big toe. It goes radially and then towards the big toe. Now what that does, guys, watch, this, watch what happens side on. Here, watch the club. As soon as I do that knee move, watch the club. The club underplanes. The club goes that way. It doesn't go that way. But what happens in most golf swings, even in conventional golf swings, if you've got that knee position there at the top of the swing in a conventional golf swing and you snap it back, watch what happens when I snap it back. Where's the club go? The club goes that way. So the message here is that we should stay in that lead knee, in that flex formation as long as we can in the downswing and try and increase it. And increase the... It's, it's like a... It's like an old knee action shock absorber in an old car. You young guys wouldn't know that. They used to have a knee action. They used to just do that. It was an old, it was just a, you know, a box with a with a lever off, and it was called a knee action shock absorber on the old, you know, 20s motor cars. Now that's what we want to do. We want to have a lead knee action shock absorber here. So we're coiled into here. We've got that that tension on that lead knee, and then it just moves there. And watch what happens. Lead shoulder goes up club drops back, arms start to move into the channel and go into out. Now that's really important and you really can't, I don't think initially when you're learning the soggy knees to overdo the soggy knees. You can sit into the soggy knees as much as you like. Now initially when you get into soggy knees, you know if you get down a long way, if you get down a long way two things are going to happen. As the further you go down, the further your stance is going to get out because you want to do that with your knees and that forces your feet out. Pretty hard to do that if your feet are close together and that doesn't matter. Now, now, the, now the other thing is as you get down you, you'll feel the golf club's too long. You'll feel it's too long because as you go down you'll be putting your you know, you're getting your hands close to the ground clearly. So all you have to do guys if you don't want to grip your golf club down, now I grip my golf club down anyway because I want them all at one length like they are in uh, the Cobra one length. But if you don't want to grip the club down, as, as we go down with the soggy knees, as we go down here, as the hands get lower, just put the hands up a little bit. Just cock them up a little bit. Just ulna deviate them. Just do, I don't do that normally because I, I grip my club down so it doesn't affect me. But, but, it, but if you get here and you're gripping normal and you get down here and the club feels club feels like a the toe is way off the ground uh, the club's now 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 too upright just, just 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 move your hands up a little bit just bring them up a little bit don't take them away from your body just I'll not deviate them here yeah. just do that that's just another way going forward I'm getting a set of golf clubs specially made, the, the one length, and they'll, they'll have the, the lies on them relative to the final 
uh, positioning that I will want in my Channel R golf swing. Uh, but, but I'm not there yet, so I don't want to get those built. So I'm compromising at the moment, I'm just gripping clubs down and, and just just altering you know, with my hands how I want the club to sit. Now the other thing guys, if, if you get down here, and as you squat down, as you squat down you get a little bit of shaft angle. Now normally when you've got shaft angle with a back ball position it opens the blade and the ball will go right. But if, if you're comfortable with having a bit of shaft angle as you go down with, with the new soggy knees process, that's okay guys, just shut the face down a little bit. You can have that little bit of, little bit of uh, shaft lean, but just shut the face down a little bit. And you'll know how much to shut it down by where your ball's going. Just hit a couple of shots if they're going right, just shut it down a little bit more till they start to just come back a little bit. That's easy, yeah, but sure. Because what happens, guys, is that if, I, if, I'm, if I'm fairly upright here, my shaft is normally in line with that leg here. If I move forward, the leg changes its angle, the thigh here changes its angle, so the club wants to move that way a little bit. Now that's perfectly okay, providing you shut the club face down a little bit. Just some little important points there. What else, George? What else? Old memory, guys. I can't remember anything these days. Okay, we've talked about how the lead knee should start that downswing. Um, bowling net shaft lean. Okay, um, Brad Oliver, one of the guys uh, who's been posting on the channel, has asked about, and this may be good for, for everybody, and somebody else today, and I just forget who it was, uh, said uh, that they're having you know, success up to seven line, but as the club gets longer, they're not having the success, and certainly when they get into the woods, and the hybrids, nowhere near the success they're having with, with up to the seven line. Now guys, that could happen, and I'm sure it's happening because of this. If we're setting up you know, with an eight iron or a seven iron or something like that, and we're here, and we've got this formation here, where the hands are you know, reasonably close to the body. As the club gets longer, um, there's just a propensity to get further away from the ball. And particularly when you get to the, to the hybrids and the drivers and that sort of thing. But guys, you've got to resist that. You've got to resist that. Now it'll feel uncomfortable initially if the, if the club gets longer, but you've just got to resist it. You've got to get closer and try and maintain this relativity, whatever that hand position is with the 7-iron or the 8-iron, you've got to try and keep that in, um, in the rest of the golf clubs. <coughs> now, now Brad Oliver said that he was experiencing some, some duck hooks uh, with his driver. And, and he basically self-diagnosed himself. He said, I think I was overdoing the, the five o'clock nose and I was staying back here so much that as I came in here I was back here and I was just you know slap flap releasing it and just smothering the ball staying back here and just you know ducking because the, the face was shut down the ball into the ground but what happens guys if, when you get to the driver or the longer clubs where, where we've been in here with our our shorter clubs invariably we'll get like that now the balance is compromised for a start here now you've got to resist that, you've got to try and get the same formation in your hands with the driver and stay down to it as much. Now it's hard, but the way to do it is just get, it's just set up in that position here, grip the driver down a little bit to get the feeling and just hit a couple of shots guys like this, where as, as you're coming in, just little half shots with the driver where the lead arm really does pull hard coming into the ball and gets this lead shoulder up which gets that into out and puts the loft on the golf club. If you don't get that lead hand pulling off that back ball position you're really going to just shut the club face down and you'll get no launch height on it. You won't be able to play the driver very effectively. So, so, to, so to get the feeling just get it off the back here. Don't put too much shaft angle on it. Loft your driver up if you can because you know being on the back ball position You've only got to move forward a little bit and you've got no loft on the driver. So you want an insurance policy set up there. Yeah, so, so just get in here guys. Just take the driver back in the soggy knee. Get here and just pull it in. Just pull. And just hit a couple like that. Where you're pulling it in with that lead arm. The shoulders are closed. The, the, the knees are soggy. 
just pull it in here. Get here, pull, pull, release. Pull, pull, release. But you don't want that lead arm coming into the body, guys. And, and invariably, if you stretch for the ball, at address, coming down here, you might tend to do that. You pull that lead arm in, which just shuts the club face down and the ball will go over here, and you get no flight on the ball at all. So just hit. I think Brad's probably, Brad Oliver has actually cured his own problem, but if you haven't, Brad, as I suggested to you, just hit some shots like this. Just hit it, you know, grip it down a couple of inches. Get in here, here, just going to pull that lead arm through the ball. Here. And do it as soft as you can, just get here, pull, just take it up here, milk it, pull, pull, and on the third one just release it. Pull, 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 fire it. And just keep that lead knee nice and flexed through the ball. Just aim it this way. Yeah, we don't want that. Always want this. Sit into those knees, just pull it down. Just hit a couple of those. That's just perfect flight. You could play with that in the golf course. And that's saggy, baggy, soggy knees. But just hit a few of those. You'll be amazed at the type of contact that you get when you have that, that drag and sag. That's what it is. It's a drag with a sag. Drag with a sag. Mo Norman. Mo Norman used to do this. His was a vertical drop and he sagged into his knees. But he used to pull so hard with that lead hand. That's why his contact was so amazing and why he was so accurate. So, so try that, guys. I just hope that uh, those couple of little things might, uh, might make life a little easier, especially that initial setting up process. Don't, uh, don't get all locked up over here like that. Just come in normally. Sit down, even with the driver. Here's our golf ball here. We want to be in here. Just feel. And feel your arms in here, guys. Don't, don't feel like you've ever got to stretch for the ball with the driver. You don't need to do that. Just feel here. Anyway, guys, have a look at that. I hope that, uh, I hope that that's, that's good, you know, like, uh, you know, finite uh, detail stuff that, that, that can help you enormously. That, that, that positioning at address is so important. And as the club gets longer, we don't want any reach. Because reach affects balance, and, and it just affects the ability to get in the arc quickly on the back. So if you're out here, you'll tend to go sideways. If you're in here, you'll get in that arc, ease, uh, in that channel quickly, and you'll be able to stay in that channel on the downswing easily. Okay, guys, I hope that helped.